we will come to exodus we will read some scriptures day of pentecost is a very important day uh, and uh, we will learn from god's word uh, together uh, exodus chapter 19 verse 1 to 8 exodus chapter 19 verse 1 to 8 uh <clears throat> vijay sister can you lead us in reading exodus 19 1 to 8 sure pastor you can come on in your uh, video if it's okay Ye- yes pastor on the first day of the f- third month after the israelites left egypt on that very day they came into the desert of sinai after they set out for rephidim they entered the desert of sinai and israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain then moses went up to god and the lord called to him from the mountain and said this is what you are to say to the descendants of jacob and what you are to tell the people of israel you yourselves have seen what i did to egypt and how i carried you on the eagles wings and brought you to myself now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession although the whole earth is mine you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words you are to speak to israelites so moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and said before them all the words and said before them all the words that the lord had commanded him to speak the people all responded together we will do everything the lord had said so moses brought their answer back to the lord my lord add his blessings to this word amen let's come to acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 and verse 1 to uh 16 acts chapter 2 1 to 16 acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 16 when the day of pentecost came they were all together in one place suddenly a cloud like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to the rest on each of them all of them were filled with the holy spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the spirit enabled them now that now that were staying in jerusalem god fearing jews from every nation under heaven when they heard this sound a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language utterly amazed they asked are not all these men who are speaking galileans then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language parthians medes elamites residents of mesopotamia judea cappadocia pontus and asia phrygia and pamphylia egypt and the parts of libya near cyrene visitors from rome both jews and converts to judaism cretans and arabs we hear them declaring the wonders of god in our own tongues amazed and perplexed they asked one another one another what does this mean some however made fun of them and said they have had too much wine then peter stood up with the leaven raised his voice and addressed the crowd fellow jews and all of you who live in jerusalem let me explain this to you listen carefully to what i say these men are not drunk as you suppose it's only 9 in the morning no this is what was spoken by the prophet joel thank you thank you brother wilson now you can take your notes it's it's going to be an exciting study uh, on what happened in the day of pentecost now if you read exodus 19 and acts 2 these are two scriptures which you have to compare and study on what happened literally on the day of pentecost and and the lord opened some things which happened this uh, these uh, quarantine times is to understand the depths of god i have uh, uh, 
and, and it's, it's so mind blowing the revelations are. And I'm just amazed. And I thank the Lord for that word. Seek and you will find. Knowing God is the blessed experience. It's not a one day experience, it's a journey. And each day, I pray that when we all go to 80, 100, and we will be so much filled with God. We will know so much about God that we will just get immersed in Him as we go from death into life. Ravi Zakaria's uh, memorial service, I don't know how many of you watched, you, that's a good service which you have to watch, it's there on YouTube. I'll probably send it to you in WhatsApp after this service. A man from Chennai, a man from our town, Chennai, shook the world and its audience with the message of Jesus. And that's a great, great blessing. That's a great, great testimony. And look at Louis Giglio, who is one of the biggest pastors in Atlanta, passion movement, talking about him, how he, how his lifestyle was. It was all so, so touching. You know, you, we have to learn about them. We have to learn from them. Sadly, only when people die, we try to learn from them, right? <laughs> but I think when, we, when people are alive, we should go to them for more of God. So surround yourself with the people of God. Go to people when God is being preached. You know, we have our Bible study. We have our fasting prayers. It, that, that needs that, that, that longing. Then you will know more about God. Now, what happened in Exodus 19, according to the Jewish community, is a wedding. Listen to this carefully. It's a wedding between God and his people Israel. Wedding means together, uniting together. God as a husband. If you look through the Bible, you will see that God is like a mad lover. Yeah, he's, in, in our terms, I would say he's like a mad lover, not that erotic love. It's a, it's, a, it's a pure love. He wants a people for himself. He wants people for himself. Last week from our church, there was one mad lover who crossed the borders without a pass, without a police See, he went through the villages and forests and he brought his family back to Bangalore without any quarantine. Now don't ask me who he is. He's there in this gathering. <laughs> but God is something similar. God is something so similar. You, you look about how Jacob spent time in his father-in-law's house for 21 years. That's a picture of God. You can see how Isaac and Rebekah meet together. That's there in the Bible. That's, that's God meeting his people. Through Moses, God is meeting the people. And when Jesus came, he came, he broke all protocols. He broke all, you know, uh, territorial uh, uh, things. And he came to the earth in search of a bride. A search of a people whom... He wants for himself. What happened in Exodus chapter 19 is the same thing. God gave a proposal. Look at what he's telling. He's coming. Hey, on Passover, how many of you remember Passover? We have mentioned those names. Passover, when they, they, they left Egypt on that day. On Passover, Israel was established as a nation. But on Shavuot, on Pentecost, they became a spiritual nation spiritual nation never forget on Shavuot on Pentecost they became a spiritual reality many of us have gone from you know sometimes you know uh, uh, you know our family of our we are born in a good family thank God for that Christian parents you have it's good some of us have come from Hindu backgrounds from Muslim backgrounds from different backgrounds but whatever be the day when we learnt about Jesus that's Passover night for us but then we have to be spiritually formed we should be a spiritual reality we should live in the spiritual realm of God and that is Pentecost that is Shavuot it is accepting the wedding proposal from God like how Israel I'm asking you have you seen God as your lover a lover a passionate lover who loves you so deeply you cannot equate a husband's love to his wife for that. No, this is far beyond that. It's a, it's a love that demolishes all traditions, 
traditions, all caste, all race. He breaks it. He comes to his own. What happened in Sinai? This is the proposal he's telling. This is what you have to say. 19 verse 3. You can note that down. Then Moses went up to God and Lord called him from the mountain and said, this is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt. You saw that. You saw what did I do to Egypt. And, and, and I carried you on eagle swings. I want to tell you, precious people of God, you are carried on eagle swings right now. You're carried on eagles. You do not know where you're going. You don't know how you made it. You are carried on eagles' wings. Those who, those who with thankfulness say amen. You're carried on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. I brought you to myself. I brought you to myself. I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now he's giving the proposal. If you obey me fully, if you obey me fully, and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Proposal. God, like a lover, is giving that proposal to the people of Israel. And who is taking it? Moses, all alone, representing man, humanity. And you know what? Look at these are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Then 7, verse 7. So Moses went back. So Moses has seen this. He heard it. Only he heard it. Okay. Now listen. He's coming and telling to the people of Israel. These fellows, you know who these number one rogues. Moses is telling. God wants you to be a wedded society to him. Will you accept this proposal? In Midrash, in all in all their literal, oral traditions, they say that God gave this proposal to many nations, but only Israel accepted it. Now, Moses went back, summoned the elders of Israel and said before all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak, the people all responded together, we will do everything the Lord had said. Now, between seven and eight, there are some days gap. That's what people say. Some people, uh, should we accept the invitation of God? Should we become... Some people were excited. Joshua was, Joshua, Caleb, all of them. Yes, yes, we have to go for God. We have to be his people. Some fellows who came from Israel all with all their rubbishness, they said, let's wait. But it seems all the women persuaded their husbands to, like many husbands, <laughs> many churches, women are the stronghold. Why? Because they know the love of God. They have, they have seen something missing in their husband's love, which they find only in God. I, if I was in shelter house, I would have come and taken that front row seat like this and said a praise. No husband's love can compare to the love of God. He, he cares for us. He cares for us. And what happened on Shavuot, on Pentecost, is he's taking the people of Israel for his own as a bride. They say, in fact, God said it seems he took Mount Sinai like a bucket. That's how Jewish rabbis are telling. Fellows, I am giving you a proposal. You want me, I will marry you. Else this will be your graveyard. <laughs> well, I, 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 I like that. I like that teaching. I never heard this, but I, I spent hours researching about it. That's why I'm giving it to you. As the Holy Spirit reminded me. If you love the Lord. On Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, he's telling, I will make your kingdom of priests priestly kingdom. Where do you hear that in New Testament? First Peter 2 9 you are a kingdom of priests a royal priesthood. Never forget brothers and sisters Christianity is not I prayed to the Lord, he did a miracle, he healed me, that's all there but a kingdom of priests ministering before his presence ministering. When you sing a song you sing before the presence of the Lord when you read a scripture you do it in the presence of the Lord when you do good works, you do it as a priest, representing God. You are a priest in your family. Lift your hands and say, I'm a priest in my family. I'm a priest in the sight of the Lord. Shavuot, Pentecost brings us to that reality. Torah is the marriage contract, the Ten Commandments, the Torah, the the old law, you know that? The Old Testament. It's a marriage contract between covenanted partners. 
mitzvot, the, the Jewish people call the commandments as mitzvot, M-I-T-Z-V-O-T, mitzvot, the commandments, 613 of them, 613 commandments are the daily interactions between God and man. As you keep, that's how the Israelites took it. Commandments were not a, a, a big burden on them. It was a sign of love. It was a sign of love. As I keep the commandments of the Lord, it's a sign of love. Torah study and worship are pillow talk with God. That's what they talk. Torah study, studying of God's word, studying of the precepts of God. Never take a Bible study lightly, brothers. I want to tell you. Once we understand the covenant love of God, wherever you see a Bible study, run for it, go for it. That's how you catch the heart of your lover. You know his heart by searching God's word. Thank God that you are here. Learning God's word. And I know God is gripping some of you by his love right now as I'm preaching because that's what happened when I learned it. We have thought Pentecost is just talking in tongues and all those things. That's all there. But on the day of Pentecost, what happened in Acts chapter 2? You know, because Israelites said, we will do everything he said. He made them as his own kingdom. All of you who are hearing me from their families and rooms, you know why God's grace came to you? Because he knew you will say, we will do everything that you will command us to. That's why grace came in search of you. That's why grace came in search of you. That's why God became your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at God's heart. I request somebody to read Hosea chapter 2 and verse 14. Hosea chapter 2 and verse 14. Somebody can read it for me. Therefore, I am now going to allure her. Ah, go, go ahead. I will lead her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. Then I will... I will give... Yeah, that's enough. I'm going to allure her. Now, after God took Israel as their, as his wife, as his bride, he, she went away like many of the so-called lovers. See, in Hollywood, you don't see a permanent marriage. In Bollywood, you don't see a good marriage. Only in movies, uh, that's not real time. They are not like that. But God is telling, I'm going to allure her. What happens in this pandemic is he's alluring you towards himself. He's cutting off all your other relationships and saying, hey, come, come, come to me. Come to my heart. Draw to my heart. Pre-pandemic is a different story. After this, it's a new, new proportion altogether. I want to love you. I want to make you a storehouse of my love. And look at verse 19, Hosea 2, 19 and 20. You should never forget this verse. Hosea 2, 19 and 20. Somebody read it for me. I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me. In righteousness and justice, in loving kindness and mercy, I will betroth you to me in faithfulness. And you shall know the Lord. You shall know the Lord. Wow. I will marry you. That's what he's saying. Betroth. Don't confuse with that. I will marry you to me with me forever. I will marry you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you. I will marry you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. God, what did he do in, the, in Sinai? It was a marriage proposal. It was a marriage proposal. And Israel said, yes, we will do whatever you command us to do. But they went away from the Lord. But God did not forsake the planet. Through Moses, he gave the laws as a contract, but Israel could not keep it. What happened? God sent his own son. God sent his own son. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 10. Can somebody read it for me? Acts 1 and verse 10. Follow this, okay? It's a trail of love marriage. God calling Israel, marrying Israel, wedding them. But Israel went after other gods, Baals, mm -hmm. after idols, after money. Like many of us wander in our hearts, we go accordingly. But then God came 
Look at Acts 2 verse 10. Some Acts 1, sorry, John 1 and verse 10. Someone read it for me. John 1 and verse 10. Quickly, we don't have time. Come on, quickly. John he was in the world. Yeah. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. The world did not recognize him. Uh, then, verse 11. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. People of Israel did not receive the lover, the love of God. And let verse 12. Quickly, verse 12. All who did receive him to those who believed in his name, yes. he gave the right to become children of God. He gave the right. Whoever receives Jesus, he gives them the right to become the children of God. Means the same concept of Israel as his children, but he is their lover, he is their husband. God as your husband. Have you loved him like that? Not for not the uh, our human relationships cannot be evaluated with the love which God has offered us. And what happened in Shavuot is God giving a new wedding proposal to the world, to you and me. You are included now. Whatever happened in Sinai. It's happening in the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Spirit is coming down. Now what is the marriage contract? Somebody can you tell me? What is the marriage contract? If in the Old Testament, the law was the marriage contract. In the New Testament, what is it? Somebody, quickly. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the marriage contract between God and you. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit draws us to the heart of God. The Holy Spirit gives us that love. Oh, the Holy Spirit gives us that passion for God. The Holy Spirit gives us that, that longing for God. The Holy Spirit himself is God. He has given us that wedding ring. He's already married us. And the marriage one day will be consummated in eternity. We will be one with the Lord. We will be together with the Lord. Somebody said, Amen. Hallelujah. You're not alone. As long as you have the Holy Spirit, He is your marriage covenant contract. You have entered into a love relationship. You have entered into a love relationship. You have entered into a love relationship between God. Have you loved Him? Many people, uh, sometimes I say, you know, forgive me, friends, we are all together. But whenever we see the love for God less, what does that mean? The contract, the contract is not strong. Once the Holy Spirit is inside your heart, once the Holy Spirit is inside your heart, you will not let go of that relationship for anything else. And what happened in the day of Pentecost is what happened in Sinai. 120 people said yes to God. They were filled with the power of God. They spoke in tongues. They were filled with the love of God. And like in Pentecost, I say first fruits. 3,000 people were added from different races and tribes and tongues. One brother in Shelter House told me Tamilians also were there. We do not know. Probably they would have been there. But you and me are first fruits. You are a part of that batch who accepted the proposal. If you accepted the proposal of the Lord, will you just unmute your mics and just say a hallelujah? Yes, all of us unmute. Just say, Lord, I accept Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. 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 I accept your proposal. Hallelujah. I accept your proposal of love. I accept your proposal of love. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with, not for anything. I'm not here to question you. I'm not here to look at what you're doing. But I know that you, can, you are doing it all for me. You're alluring me into wilderness, into this quarantine season, so that I might see you. I might feel you, that I might experience you. Give me once again that flame, which is lost. In the walk of life, we have lost that flame. It's easy to lose that. But today will you say, Lord, I want that contract, that sign of our marriage. I want the Holy Spirit 
the sign of our marital relationship. When you go to the presence of God, He will fill you with the tongues, that supernatural love. You will see visions, you will see dreams, you will see God. Then traffic problem in Banargata will not be a problem. <laughs> then money will not be an issue. If you get the marriage contract with God, if you get the sign of marriage with God, you will give it all for Jesus because He is in love with you. He is in love with you. And that echoes through the New Testament. That echoes through the New Testament. The love of God. Do you, does He have your first love? Does He have your first love? Is it a time-bound love that we just have on a Sunday? Hus husbands and wives, if you just marry, if you marry and you just show your love on a one-day basis, what use is a marriage? It's a lifetime of companionship with Jesus. He wants to feel you. He wants to feel you. Pentecost is hence a covenant of God with his bride. The contract sign being the Holy Spirit. And we are committed. Commitment. It's a contract based on commitment. If you say yes, he will fill you. If you say yes, he will use you. If you say yes, he will change your situations. If he changed the fisherman Peter to be an evangelist Peter, he will do the same in your life. Not for anything else, but to show your lover. But to show. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to his name. Oh, fill us with your love, O oh God. That we will love you only. That we will love you only. Look at Deuteronomy 7, 7 and 8. The argument of God. Deuteronomy 7, 7 and 8. Can somebody read it to me? Deuteronomy 7, 7 and 8. Shazara. The Lord did not send his affection on you. And the Lord, did, now be careful. The Lord, Lord did not set his affection on you because... Uh, and choose you because uh, you were uh, more numerous than uh, other people uh, for you were the fewest of all people you are the fewest of all people you are not even a number brother hey god did not choose you because you are you are rich god did not choose you because you are smart god did not choose you because you are big and no 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 why but it was because uh, the lord loved you but and it was because the lord loved you if you have the Holy Spirit, it is because the Lord loved you. Lift your hands and say, the Lord loves me. Jesus loves me. God loves me. Yeah. Ah. And kept the oath, his ah. word to your forefathers, ah. that he brought you ah. out with a mighty hand and ah. redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Ah. Verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, he is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. You might be the first person who accepted the marriage contract, but God is telling to a thousand generations, he will keep his covenant. Who has given that? Hey, who has given that? I will take care of you for a thousand. The moment you start praising God, his covenant starts working in your life. The moment you serve God, His covenant is at work in your life. His power is at work in your life. You may not see your third or fourth, or may you see your fourth generation, five generation, but can you see your thousand generation? God has seen that. He will keep His covenant of love. But He says, you know, He who married you will marry them also. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's too, it's a big proposal that you cannot reject. He's calling you. To a covenant of love. He has married you. Look at what Jesus is telling. Look at Jesus in John chapter 14. 
like a lover he is telling john 14:22 and verse 23 it just broke open my eyes all this while i saw this i was but suddenly in this context somebody can you read it for me can you come to your video somebody and read it for me please uh, other other than rahul now a new person who is enjoying the teaching who loves who is filled with their love of god john chapter 14 22 23 quickly then judas said but lord why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world jesus replied anyone who loves me will obey my teaching my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them verse 24 the negative any one who does does not love me will not obey my teaching these words you hear are not my own they belong to the father who sent me amen thank you look at that judas is asking hey, lord why are you not iscariot guy it's written there one other judas is there he is telling why why are you choosing us and not to the world he is saying anyone who loves me will obey my teaching god knows that you will obey his teaching and once you obey his teaching what is what is he telling like how he came in sinai my father will love my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them he will keep you as his home lift your hands and say lord make me your home make me as your home where you dwell the evil spirits will not come in the name of jesus i rebuke every evil spirit tormenting your heart with evil thoughts with evil confusing thoughts out in the name of jesus your house your body is the is the house of the father and the son dwelt by the spirit of god Hallelujah! Lift your hands and say, "Amen." No more conflict. No more infirmity. No more Hallelujah stress. No more all the attacks of the enemy. Oh, put your hands on your hand, on put your right hand on your head and say, "This this home is the Lord's home. This home is the Lord's home. This is my Lord's home. This is my Father's home. No evil." thought can dwell in here no evil spirit can dwell in here the lord jesus has liberated me i am his house i am his bride hallelujah amen amen wow i just feel like preaching what happened is a marriage contract signed with you Ephesians 5:30 can somebody read it for me how deep our relationship with him is if you have kjv king james version it will be even good king james version ephesians 5:30 somebody can you read it for me there are a lot of people here quickly i thought everybody will come to their screen and read hey are you married to jesus come out on the screen and read ephesians 5:30 quickly so we are the members of his body we are the members of his, of his body uh, of his flesh of his flesh and of his bones and of his bones wow so intimate members of his flesh members of his bone so closely we are joined with jesus by his spirit god loves the church and we are a part of the spiritual body of jesus church is not a building what god is telling through these times is god was i was thinking we thought church to be a building we thought church is to be numbers no god is now telling each one of you through this pandemic you are the church you are mine meaning ennu deyidu you are mine you are my possession now start working as a priest intercede for the nation intercede for your family your prayers are important your voice is important how many husbands will say hey wife don't talk to me i don't like you you will not get the food in the afternoon you have to spend time with him you have to know his heart the best wife is the one who has known the heart of the husband heart of jesus is in the bible 
Hallelujah. Amen. So beautiful. He loved us to the flesh, to the bones. Next time when you get a bone pain, sometimes God will touch your bone and that time you'll get a spray. Pastor, pray for me, back pain. That time you should say, Lord, you are in my bones. I thank you that you love me to my bones. When you get a pain in your flesh, you should say, Lord, thank you that you are in my flesh. Flesh of flesh, spirit of spirit, bone of bone. Somebody said, Amen. This is, that is, that is Mount Sinai experience. Your body will work. I am telling you, please forward David in times of COVID. You will think pastor is telling. Why should I forward? Don't do, don't do. If you have Lord as your savior, if you have Lord as your lover, you will, you will show him. You will, you will, you will exalt him. You will magnify him. I'm thinking all our technocrat church. I'm looking at our church uh, sharing two, three shares in Facebook. Shame on us. Shame on us. Serious. World is looking for answers. Either you give the answer or share it in your Facebook and give the answer. Not for pastor's name. No, please. If you have God as your lover, throw off all the shackles. Throw off all that. Love the Lord and love his teaching. Make use of social media properly. Make use of every opportunities for the lover, for God who loves you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know it is, but this is, this is Pentecost. This is Shavuot. He wants, the Holy Spirit wants you. Brother, will you open your heart and say, I, I am agreeing to that contract. Sister, will you agree? I am re I am ready to my love. All this while I thought God as my magician, but now I understand on this Pentecost, I understand God as my lover. And I give my life to him. I give my being. I give my thoughts to him. I give my sacrifice to him. I thank God for youngsters who are passionate about God. Thank God for people like Enoch who, who became young blood for the Lord. Come out for ministry. Jump for ministry. Do whatever you can. Who said it's quarantine? It's, it's quarantine with him to understand his love. But do whatever you can for the expansion of the kingdom of God. I asked yesterday Brother Naveen and uh, uh, Brother Dilu there in Bangalore. I said, I heard about the migrant crisis. Can we give some 50 foot packets if you can? And there, there I think they are discussing. If the Lord's love prompts you, brothers, do that. Uh, they take precautions also with the blast can. In uh, around uh, our, our central railway station, there are people who are, want some food. Why don't we show the love of God? So they are on it. If, if anybody wants to not contribute, go physically and stand with them, please contact Brother Dilu, Brother uh, Navi. They will. Uh, I'm not in Bangalore now. If I was there, I would have been there. Many people ask me, Pastor, what should have the church's response be? If I had a big church like St. Mark's Cathedral, in Bangalore, St. Mark's Road. You know what I would have been, what I would have done if I was the bishop? Thank God I'm not the bishop, but if I was the bishop, I would have opened the CSI ground for, for, for people, migrants to come and eat anytime. If I had that property, I would have probably also thought of making that as quarantine centers. Yeah. People don't have beds. We are talking Catholics have such Big lands everywhere in every city. What is the church? Church is closed. No, church should be open this time. Church should be open this time. Otherwise, excuse. so that's, that's, that's the story. We, we reflect God. Pastor, what, what, what another verse can you, Ephesians 5 is Christ and church marriage. 2 Corinthians 11, 2 to 4. Quickly, 2 Corinthians 11, 2 to 4. The danger in the marriage, okay? I'm just talking about the danger in the marriage now. If, if this is happening, then our marriage will be lost. Second Corinthians 11, 2 to 4. For I am jealous over you with yeah. godly jealousy. I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Uh. For I have exposed you to one husband uh. that I may present you as a just virgin to Christ. As a pure virgin to him. Pure virgin. What is a pure virgin? She has not given her body to anybody else. Church, don't give your body to anybody else. Don't give your body to your company. Don't give your body to your career. Don't give your body to uh, prostitution, Netflix and Amazon Prime. Don't give it. 
Give your bodies, Give to, your Jesus. bodies to Jesus. Let our bodies function for Jesus and each one of your members of that body. Can you rise up to your potential and work for the Lord? And look at verse th three. But I am afraid that just as ye was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Your sincere and pure devotion to Christ can be taken away by money, by deadlines, by pressure. Let that not come upon your love life with Jesus in the name of Jesus as his servant. I demolish that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Devotion. Devotion to Jesus. Devotion to Christ. Fully devoted to Jesus. Fully devoted for the cause of the master. I challenge each one of you. If you are in social media, come and share God's message. I challenge if you are in any, any platform, showcase your lover. Passionately. If our lifestyle doesn't contradict with our message, people will not come to your message. But if our lifestyle is pure, they will come. They will come. I just want to finish with this. Pastor, what is Christ's commandment? What was, what is, so Jesus is the embodiment of Torah. He is, he is our lover. He is our husband. John 15, 12. Tia wanted a chance. You can read it, Tia. John 14. John 15, 12. John 15 and verse 12. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Love yourself? Love hey, each hey, other hey. as I have loved you. Diti, is it love yourself? Each other. Love, love each other. Everybody say each other. Each Brother other. Ram, be keep calm and just smile. Good DP. Love each other. Each other. Yeah. Uh, uh, Naveen Garu, can you send that? Each other. Uh, each other. Love each other. Love each other. That's the love commandment. Each love each other. Love each other. Which means... Everything that we do to one another will be out of that love which God has filled us. It will be an expression of God's love. It will be an expression of God's love. When you sing to the Lord, it will be an expression of God's love. When you work with your colleagues as a manager, it will be an expression of God's love. When you are a neighbor of a, of a person who does not know the Lord, it will be an expression of God's love. Have you expressed God's love? I have seen the honeymoon pictures of husband and wife. That honeymoon time, they will put the picture. After that, we do not know where the picture will go. Then it was only them. <laughs> they want to show off. I was in Eiffel Tower. I was in Rome. I was in Paris. Good. But have you expressed the love which God has filled you with? Now, the Holy Spirit is a contract and He fills you with the love of your husband. That's there in Romans 5 5. Quickly, somebody read Romans 5 5. I'm sorry I took a little bit of time, but it's Pentecost Day. You need to be filled with the love of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 5 5. Quickly, somebody else. And yeah. hope does not put us to shame. Yep. Because yep. God's love has been poured out into our hearts through ah. the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy has Spirit. Been... That's enough. That's enough. Hope doesn't. Disappoint us. The Holy Spirit's love is being poured into our heart. The, the love of God is being poured into our hearts by whom? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How can you love each other? By the love which the Holy Spirit fills you with. It's love. It's love. It's a life of love. Loving your enemies, loving your persecutors, loving everybody. Just to come to a close. God hated prostitution. God hates prostitution. He doesn't like you giving more time for your company. No, he doesn't like. Of course, he, he wants you to be your, your best, but he wants your time. He, he is a jealous lover. He wants you. How is your time with the Lord? 
give him the best time, the first time, the best, the first, and the utmost, not the waste. Best, the best for the Lord, the best for the Lord. I I understood a small paradigm here in the Jews read Song of Songs in pa in Passover. The Jewish community read Song of Songs. How many of you read Song of Songs? It's not a bad book, okay? It's a wonderful book of love between lovers. Touching the father's love for you, homework for you, read Song of Songs. I know some of our Sunday school teachers said, don't read Song of Songs, it's not good. <laughs> it, but Song of Songs, if you understand God's love, if you do not understand it, it's, it's a different song. But Song of Songs is the love of a lover for his wife. Jews read Ruth at Pentecost. Ruth, the book of Ruth at Shavuot. And Ecclesiastes at Sukkot, that the tabernacle. So the Ruth at Pentecost. What is Ruth at Pentecost? Ruth is a Moabite. She is a Gentile. Pentecost to a Jewish member should talk about a Gentile wife to God. They are reading Ruth, but they are not the Ruth. You and me are the Ruth. We said we will come with God. That's why the mantle of God's love is on you and your family. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we just close our eyes and pray? I want to end with this beautiful scripture from Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, one promise for you and then we will pray. Isaiah 54 and verse 5. Isaiah 54 and verse 5. Can you read somebody? Sheba wanted to read. It is your husband. Okay, all right. Minamrata, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So you maker is your husband. Your the Lord is your husband. Yeah, the Lord Almighty is his name. Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. Ah. He is called the God of all the earth. Verse 6, 2. The Lord will call you back as ah. if you were, uh, as if you are a wife deserted and distressed in spirit. A ah. wife who married young only to be rejected, says our God. Ah. So Isaiah 54 is about the deep love of God again. Ruth talks about that love in Ruth is a loyal love. Everybody say loyal love, loyal love, loyalty in love and love in loyalty. Hesed, Hesed, loving kindness. When, when Tyndale translated the Hebrew Bible, he didn't understand that word for Hesed. He just put loving kindness. What is that? Love and kindness together. That's loving kindness. May all of us in Shelter House be carriers of Hesed, loving kindness. To, 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 to loyal love to God and loving kindness to one another. Shall we all pray together?